Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to Node's keynote speaker, sorry, today's keynote speaker, No Talk. No is not just the Chief Growth Officer at HumanMade, shaping the future of digital landscapes, but also the founding pillar of WordCamp Europe and reaching the global WordPress community. Beyond the digital domain, No champions animal welfare, leading rescue missions for animals in the crisis areas of Ukraine, a true visionary, no embodies innovation, community, and compassion. Please join me in warmly welcoming No Talk, our keynote speaker. Thank you so much. John, you didn't tell me there was going to be this many people. So I was looking at the attendees list uh, yesterday and before yesterday, and there's just so many new faces. It's actually incredible. Uh, just take a quick moment to say hi and introduce yourself to the person next to you on either side. So now that we all know each other, I have a small experience to share. A few weeks ago, I had a meeting with a, a large company that you all know uh, that's in the region. And they said that WordPress, and I'm quoting them here, they use this exact word, WordPress is obsolete. And it's frustrating to hear because WordPress has grown so much um, over these years and it has become instrumental as software, as uh, instrumental to humanity uh, ex experience on the web, which is you know, saying a lot. Who would have thought that 20 years ago, WordPress would be you know, installed on 20% of 1 million of the top uh, websites on the world, which is really very, very impressive. WordPress is one of those few, few projects uh, that has had and continues to have, have a outsized impact on the web. But this word, obsolete, it's bugged me. Uh, it really has. Uh, and it's reinforced something I've thought about a lot in recent years, and that despite the success of WordPress, it has to change, and it has to adapt. Uh, this thought has accelerated in the last few years, but we'll get back to that. My own WordPress journey started in 2009. Uh, I had this design, I wanted to convert it to a template, um, and I found WordPress, and I thought, wow, this is cool. Uh, but right around that time, custom post types were coming out, uh, which was really cool, uh, because I thought all of a sudden uh, this platform is affording me infinite possibilities and that I had a chance to almost have limitless um, opportunities to create different things online. And next to custom post types, WordPress has had a number of other defining moments, uh, be it uh, the, you know, the expansion and growth of the plugin ecosystem, which in its size is still unrivaled to this day, uh, be it the REST API, which allows 43% of the web to connect to the other 57%, um, or Gutenberg, now called the block editor, through all its ups and downs, has maintained course and become probably the largest open source no-code project on the web. WordPress is open, usable, secure, and a foundation for big ideas. All this innovation resulted in an, an amazing amount of experiences being created online. Um, we see this from major newspapers early on, big brands, global NGOs, and even NASA now. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, it's so very gratifying to see the work that you have all put in be used across the web. And this project pays dividends, not just financially, but to humanity as a whole. Uh, and there's something to be really said there for the 20 plus years that we've already gone through and the next 20 years or the next 40 years uh, of this project. We've created software which is honestly phenomenal. Now let's look at this journey through the lens of data. Um, I think you'll find it quite eye-opening. So here we have uh, WordPress's market share growth, and it's been extremely consistent. 
uh, except for the last few years where it stabilized a bit, and that's where we talk about this number of 43%. Now, I'm going to overlay a couple of other metrics to help create a bit more context and understanding of where we are today. And I feel this data is actually quite representative of what my experiences are uh, and that of human-made inside of this WordPress market. So the first thing I'll add is attention, represented by Google's search volume. Now, the amount of people on the internet has grown. Um, so this number, we, we may experience higher search volume today than we did back then, even though that, that value is lower. But the point being is that we are <laughs> searched less, or we are now less relevant uh, than we were before. Together with attention, let's add the idea of momentum. And momentum, in my case, I'm, I will represent through uh, new sites being added every three months. So how many new sites uh, on WordPress are, are being launched every three months? What I also like about this chart is that attention leads momentum. So someone will go online or an organization or whatever and search for WordPress, learn about WordPress, and then maybe months or years later, actually launch a website on WordPress. All this shows us that we grew and grew and grew and then plateaued for a number of years. And I'm, by plateau, I mean it was still a ton of websites being uh, launched every year. A really, really impressive feat. Uh, but then at some point, we, we hit a wall or rather a, a steep cliff, uh, and that's called COVID. And it isn't, you know, COVID's, um, oops, let me go back, there we go. And it's not necessarily COVID's fault uh, itself. <laughs> it's uh, what, how we reacted to, to the situation in that major economies, uh, I think, injected a lot of money into the various businesses and markets. And that helped our competitors um, essentially purchase or buy attention and momentum. So they were able to increase their advertising spend, they were able to scale up their sales teams, develop their partnership programs, and so on. On the flip side, the large majority of open source does not spend any money on this. So it kind of makes sense that you know, we, we, we felt that difference. Um, and so far, we haven't bounced back, not in, in a way that you know, one would expect necessarily. So to set some further context, till now I've shown you the entire demand side of the industry. Demand side being the users and the customers of WordPress. We can also look at supply side too, uh, which is us, the vendors who supply uh, products and services to customers. Instead of looking at the entire supply side of WordPress since the beginning of time, uh, I've chosen to focus on the part of the economy which is really late stage and uh, about streamlining and commoditizing uh, or you know, professionalizing these uh, services and products that we have. And here I've put together a weighted line of different metrics uh, to help inform that view. And funnily enough, they all trended in the exact same direction by the, by the same amount. Um, and the, the metrics I've used for that is the amount of agencies in the WP Engine partner program every year. I've also used uh, how many agencies are listed on Clutch, which is an agency directory platform. Uh, and then I've also uh, picked up how many freelancers were on Codable every year. Uh, it's not an exact number by any means, but it shows a trend with regards to the maturity, and more importantly, the saturation of products and services inside of WordPress. Bringing it all together, I think this, this chart shows a, an impression that is different than when you just look at a pure market share number. And since we're all friends here, I think we're all friends. Can I tell you a secret? What? Ah, OK, OK, OK. So I, it's a personal opinion, but maybe you share it too. I think we rely on this number, 43%, a bit too much. And this chart really shows it. Uh, at the beginning, there were too many clients for suppliers. And that was our kind of honeymoon phase. We're all making money. That's great. 
and then towards the backside, we start seeing that we have a lot of lot of suppliers and not that much more new business coming in. So we're fighting over the same dollars. And that's extremely challenging. You see, the 43% represents something that has happened in the past. And while you should absolutely be deeply proud of this figure, let's face it, it's not going to sell the next 1 million websites on WordPress. So I don't see it as a marketing tool by any means, and it shouldn't be used as such, but rather a badge of honor, uh, really representing the significance of the growth of WordPress over the last 20 plus years. With regards to present day, however, and what that means for our future, let's look at why we haven't had this large bounce back. If we simply isolate market share and the new sites, so attention and momentum, our journey starts to look like something that is very, very popular in the space of products uh, and innovation. And that is of the S-curve. We'll clean this up a bit. And the reason it's called an S-curve is, well, it looks like an S. Uh, it's quite <laughs> straightforward. And the S-curve is often described, or often used, to describe the life cycle of products, uh, industries, services, and how they go through their stage of introduction through to rapid growth, maturity, stabilization, and or decline. You could argue where WordPress is on this chart. Uh, in my opinion, it's quite clearly in a maturity area. Um, it's, yeah, um, for me, it's absolutely the case. And this is a very, very important stage because what happens at the stage of the S-curve is that often the S-curve is then displaced or uh, disrupted by new S-curves. And we see this in our day-to-day -day all the time. I'll give you two small examples. Taxis used to be quite cumbersome, was you know, a bit of a hassle, and then also an Uber came out, and then we had Goyek and uh, Grab in the region here too, and that, made, that completely transformed the way we travel overnight. Uh, and S-curves are not limited to you know, the cool latest technology or apps and platforms and all these kind of good things, but we can also look further back. This is the rice cooker. This used to be limited to Japanese naval vessels. Uh, and then once electricity became more widespread in Japan in the 1950s, all of a sudden it took over all households almost overnight. Uh, and that is very, very powerful uh, in terms of how quickly these disruptions happen. Now, coming back to WordPress and the broader CMS ecosystem, there's a case to be made that there's a bit of a new S-curve occurring with headless, no-code, the whole kind of AI-assisted world of things. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about generative AI, but also AI previously to that. Um, and this all kind of lumps together in this world of composable. And from my sales meetings and the conversations I'm having with clients and whoever else in the market, it's, it's definitely a narrative and a theme that they're buying into. So in a way, they're validating the fact that a potential new S-curve actually exists. Now, I've put WordPress in monolithic tags here because that's how our competitors label us. And um, they, they do that very, very often. So we have now this old and huge code base uh, that is used for blogging, only blogging, supposedly. Uh, which is quite challenging as a narrative uh, to, to work against on a day-to-day -day basis. And since many of these new vendors, these trending vendors, these cool vendors, whatever, of this new guard um, are so often integrated with, e with each other as well as adjacent technologies such as search, CRM, media management, whatever else, um, the buyer is, is left with this feeling that, hey, this, this can all work together, right? They can purchase a best-of-breed stack made of individual components where supposedly each of them is a market leader. Uh, and then, you know, f they, they communicate relatively well with each other. They're quite well integrated. Uh, and then the buyer thinks, well, I have the best thing in the world. 
But there's a catch. There's always a catch, right? So last year, Dries, the co-founder, uh, no, the founder, sorry, of Drupal, wrote this great article where he presents his thesis quite clearly that the that these trending technologies, headless microservices, uh, all these kind of vendors went on a massive drive to essentially try to innovate or reinvent how the web is created and how you build experiences and then these vendors also then claim as much, right? Like they're, they're reinforcing their own narrative. Um, but the problem is they've kind of started con converging back to the old CMS, you know, the traditional CMS or the monolithic CMS in their ways. And on the flip side, Drupal and WordPress have adapted to headless. We've become headless enabled. Um, we, we've taken on the approaches of, of headless. We know how to work with these things very effectively. Um, so there's, there's a convergence of these two sides of, I guess, approaches to the market. So it's debatable if the new vendors have genuinely created a new S-curve of innovation or if it's just all marketing and hype. Now, my gut feeling is that the answer is somewhere in between. Uh, similar to the article, there's some kind of convergence or a, a mix of the two. Now, we're 15 minutes into this presentation, and you're probably wondering, um, you know, I, I, I can't wait to see how this guy wants to change core. Now, this, here's a joke. I don't want to change core. I think core is great. There's absolutely no issue whatsoever with core, at least in, you know, in my mind. Uh, I think it's an incredible piece of software. My more simple take is that the market doesn't understand WordPress that we haven't unlocked it for the audiences of tomorrow. And I generally mean that. The code is extremely powerful in its, capable, uh, in its capabilities sorry, and its maturity. Uh, and you know, there's an immense amount of volunteers dedicated to this project. You know, they're all sitting in front of me. But or yet we have to change ourselves uh, to transform ourselves to find WordPress's new S-curve. And I write unlock here because, again, core isn't the problem. It's the distance from core to the market that is. In many ways, I think it's the end of this 43% monolithic era and time for a new one. Let's dive in. Just making sure the fonts are loading correctly. Uh, as we move from monolithic to best of breed setups, it's increasingly important to not only be aware of the broader ecosystem, but also integrate with it. This is where we were once way ahead of the curve, right, with our plugin ecosystem. Uh, and now we have 60,000 plugins. But my take is that SaaS companies and newer vendors have essentially used that as a prototype or as a blueprint to iterate upon it and create something new. And they've taken that a step further um, in terms of UI, UX, uh, how, it's, how the product marketing and how it's all packaged together. And it works really, really well. And this is, this is something that works extremely well at the top of the sales funnel because it brings users in, it makes them feel comfortable, and it makes them more productive earlier on. We may have the biggest plug-in ecosystem <laughs> in the world, but it's a mess. This is a search for Salesforce, uh, which is a very large CRM tool, but obviously the, not everybody uses that, and that's OK. Uh, so let's take something else uh, like cookies. Right? Every website, uh, at least in Europe, definitely needs a cookie policy. And we don't really have good solutions to these things, not things that users can easily just, without thinking, enable and push through. Uh, there's a lot of choice paralysis. There's a lot of exploration and discovery to do. Uh, it's quite frustrating. And even when you look at the other open app ecosystems, and by open, I don't mean open source. I just mean that you can create things for them. Um, the level of requirements and guidelines is extremely advanced and high. And we're not talking about 
you know, these rules or guidelines being applied to uh, their premium plugins or premium extensions and integrations, uh, but their entire uh, third-party ecosystems. And I absolutely encourage you to look at uh, Apple's uh, human interface guidelines or Shopify's Polaris uh, to get an understanding of what I mean. Because this is the new sort of bar uh, I feel that is in the market today. And for WordPress, I think we're standing in, a, in front of a very, very large opportunity. However, I'm not speaking about all the plugins, but I think there's a great opportunity to start with the ones that resolve the largest pain points. And looking at other CMS vendors in the space, um, the trend has become quite clear. There's integration directories, there's technology partners uh, that have dominated this narrative, and it works extremely well. You can see, you know, from this vendor in particular, it's just, it's, it's the very kind of typical template or pattern you see these days. Here's another vendor, uh, whereby the first two apps are actually created by the vendor themselves uh, and are just optional downloads. Now, funnily enough, this is not anything that's new to WordPress. And let me tell you, when you feel the pressure of the market, you start reacting. And in this case, this is why we see WooCommerce do it. They provide various first party or native extensions as optional downloads. And you know, this is for very popular features and integrations, and it makes a lot of sense because it helps the users onboard quicker, faster, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be attached to core to their core product itself, but it's there to be used immediately whenever the customer may need it. And I think the same should happen with WordPress. Oh wait, it already does. Oops. Did I not get the slide? There we go. So it already happens inside of WordPress. So you can see we all, we understand the pattern as an ecosystem, but we just haven't unlocked its full potential. Now coming back to this uh, screenshot because it's a bit more evolved, uh, I believe we should build native integrations for popular tools as well as popular features. And by popular tools, uh, I mean the, the kind of third-party applications, open source or proprietary. Um, you know, it, it's important that we fit in the larger ecosystem. So that can be from HubSpot to Algolia to whatever else. Uh, and then in terms of features, that can be the cookie uh, policy, the cookie banner, that can be uh, forms, SEO, that can be SSO, uh, single sign-on, uh, whatever that may be. I think there's an opportunity to do the research, put in the work to find out what are the most used uh, solutions that people need. And in these cases then, to combine open source, our ethos, and what has made us popular to begin with, with the best practices of the industry today. And by doing so, I think we will create the best integrations and tools that any CMS has ever seen. And my thesis is quite simple. Um, I didn't have time to, to fill out the entire um, design, but this is the new design, new admin design, which I think is very incredible uh, in terms of what's coming out of um, the, the team and the whole core side of things where this admin redesign is just, yeah, it's worlds apart. And I think it's a great opportunity to step into that and to fill this out, similar to what we saw with the WooCommerce um, marketplace but bringing in integrations either on the website directly or uh, inside of the dashboard. But for these integrations, I feel that we really have to be very strict. This is about consistent UX UI. This is about uh, consistent extensibility patterns. It's about consistent and centralized documentation. Uh, but more importantly, as I just said before, I think it's about making these integrations or extensions first class so that they're not lost somewhere in the pl plugin repository, but actually exist one click away or two clicks away on wordpress.org or inside of the dashboard. 
In a similar vein, uh, a couple weeks ago, I started building a web app on Next.js, and I needed user management. Uh, so I looked at Superbase, which is one of the open source tools uh, for managing users, and within a couple minutes, I was sold. I said, you know what, I'm going to use this with Next.js, because they did something that gave me the trust and confidence that they cared about the integration between the two platforms. You see, integration isn't about or all about how things connect into WordPress. It can also be about how WordPress connects to other things. And to use the same example, why can't we provide front-end development kits uh, of First, well, first party front end development kits to easily plug WordPress into these frameworks, just like this. And I realized you know, the, the individual pieces exist out there in a third party way, somewhere on some GitHub repo, but that is not how you compete in this market today. Let's talk about a, a more ambitious goal, because WP Admin is a very big place. Uh, it currently takes a fair amount of time to build out anything in, in WordPress, uh, just because of how many options we have and how many things we can build. It's, it's, it's not a, a huge criticism, just a, a small one. <laughs> and we'll take an example, something like a lead generation block, right? You need to add a block, maybe you add uh, two columns, in the left one you put an image uh, from your media library, in the right one you put a form, uh, that form you configure, connect to your CRM, and then maybe you test it. That's quite daunting for beginners. And even for myself, because I've gone through a, you know, this process recently, uh, it's very time consuming, it's quite frustrating. It's not where I want to be spending my time. And this is where I think we are in a unique position as a large open source project to take advantage of this. I think what we can do is what proprietary vendors can't do, and that is to chain or connect AI agents together to create superior and fast no-code uh, options or outcomes. Zapier is a good starting example. Um, so with Zapier, they allow you to use natural language to essentially create your automation, your workflow automation. So um, new email comes into inbox, send it to Google Sheet, send it into um, your CRM, put a notification in the Slack channel, whatever that may be, that's what Zapier does. And this little AI tool helps you set that all up. Now, I think in Zapier's case, because they only really help you with the planning side of things, uh, they just use a single AI agent or GPT request uh, to essentially create the plan of tasks. But what I'm suggesting is that we go a step further and that we also execute the subtasks. And you know, it remains to be seen how to implement something like this, but it's ambitious. Uh, and I think you know, as technology is evolving and how, as we see new AI developments and innovation every week, I think this could probably run on your own machine at some point without re requiring third-party subscriptions or GPUs or whatever. There we go. Uh, so coming back to our lead generation block, to give you an example, uh, can, I, can I read it? That's good. Um, the user starts, in my opinion, similar to Zapier, by expressing their wishes. I want to create a lead generation block for my latest product. And that is something that is then sent to and received by an orchestration, an, an autonomous orchestration agent uh, that then plans out and sends these tasks out to then be executed by various subtasks. And this would be an example of all these subtasks. Now, a sort of primitive, I guess, uh, predecessor already exists in WordPress. When you, know, when you try to paste content from some random source into Gutenberg, it magically formats it correctly. Why is that? It's because on the back, in, in the back end, it's able to understand and, and go through a bunch of logic to try and figure out what your original source was and then format it appropriately and paste it in such a clean way that it looks beautiful. Um, and that is, 
That's truly powerful, those kind of user experiences. It's intelligent, it's elegant as a, as a solution, and it's invisible. And this is the exact same idea with what I'm proposing, just a bit more complicated. And it's invisible because you may only choose to expose a certain piece of UI. Uh, in this case, you may say, you may propose to the user, would you like to choose one of these four designs or refresh again or terminate or whatever? Um, but this is essentially how lightweight these kind of implementations can be. And why are we uniquely positioned to do this? Well, because proprietary vendors don't want to go through this much work when they have a much more narrow point product. I think we have the opportunity um, to really go a lot further because when I experiment with proprietary tools that have these kind of, you know, build your websites through AI, I'm actually quite disappointed through the results uh, because it's, it's trying to do too much in one go and doesn't have that narrow focus to be able to really create the right kind of outcome. And in none of the tests I ran was I even satisfied with the draft enough that I would continue using that draft. So I'd waste my time, you know, building an AI kind of draft only to then have to do it all over again myself, which is not the idea. Our upside and benefits as an open source project are infinite. I think one of the better places to look for I guess inspiration of how powerful this could be for us is GitHub's co-pilot um, developer satisfaction survey, let's call it that. And we see here that co-pilot provides developers uh, with gains in productivity, flow state, and less frustration or having to overexert yourself. What GitHub Pilot does for developers, I think we can do for no-code marketers and content creators. This then gives us the advantage of increasing our time to launch for new WordPress websites, uh, making users more happy overall, uh, assuming we can execute this. And because we're all about extending WordPress, there's no reason why plugins and themes can't have their own mini agents that ship with their own products, um, giving us the true sort of end-to-end -end automation uh, that is, I guess, in line with WordPress's desire to be extendable and to have a cohesive experience. My last idea is probably my more painful one. Uh, when I go into sales conversations, I always have to work double, which is you know okay, but I'm, it's getting very, very repetitive. And what I mean by that is not only, or you know, before I even have the chance to sell our agency, human-made, I have to sell WordPress first, because the the starting point, the starting point for the customer or the buyer is that. WordPress is obsolete. It's this old CMS monolithic uh, blogging platform. It's insecure, all these kind of things. Um, so we first have to put in quite a lot of work to clear up these misconceptions, uh, educate them on things, and undo a lot of this bad marketing that exists elsewhere. So we have all the ingredients to not only tell the one-size-fits-all story, um, but I think we also have the ingredients to tell many smaller, um, great stories with sharper edges and sharper narratives. And yeah, let, let's, say, let's say I'm a user and I'm looking for, uh, or I'm a potential buyer in the market looking for headless solutions. If I try to search WordPress and headless, uh, which I did the other day, uh, I'll find uh, a page by us, Human Made, uh, in the top left corner. Then I'll find a plugin uh, for Gatsby, which has now been, it's, it's outdated, unfortunately. Um, another page from RT Camp, a uh, very nice page, by the way. And then there's a plugin from uh, Web Dev Studios, a good little uh, front end kit. You know, I was talking about front end kits before, except that they archived this just two weeks ago, <laughs> funnily enough. So, and, and then the last screenshot I have is, it's probably the best page, and it's not made by any of us. It's made by Vercel, uh, the company behind Next.js. 
so it's it's quite interesting that they've you know they figured it all all this stuff out in terms of integrations how to uh, create product marketing that br brings two brands or products together uh, in a way that you know feels very seamless to the buyer. I think we have the opportunity to you know create content uh, for these strategic verticals and. Strategic verticals are strategic because uh, we are able to combine, combine and compound various competitive advantages that we have to then create something that should position us as a market leader. I think we have that opportunity in a number of verticals. Uh, this can be uh, small to medium-sized businesses, this can be enterprise, this can be headless, uh, this can be publishing. We have the assets, we have the customers, um, if we are able to, you know, bring the software uh, into this, then we're also, uh, can you stop beeping? <laughs> um, if, if we're able to also bring the software into this that I'm talking about in terms of native integrations and um, these kind of first party solutions, then the whole page and content and strategic vertical comes together in a much more uh, cohesive way that then the consumer understands and is able to compare against other vendors. So bringing this all together, I think there's a very, very large compounding effect. Uh, imagine that the integrations and extensions I first talked about um, you know, come together, uh, are then merged with um, you know, these AI agents too that, that underpin them uh, in my second point and then that a certain basket of features, integrations, and extensions can be brought together to tell a compelling narrative around key strategic verticals, I think that starts looking very good. Again, WordPress core is not the problem. It's the distance between core and the market. And I think things like this help bring the two much closer together. Coming back to this chart, and to simplify maybe what I'm proposing, uh, is to take our code base, uh, to take the best of product marketing that we've seen in recent years across our industry, uh, and then to be, you know, finally to be a part of tomorrow's innovation, to once again create a shift in the market and usher in a new era of growth for WordPress. It's important to note that I don't, you know, I don't think anything I've presented creates that new era of innovation by itself, but rather, um, you, know, you know, look at them as fire starters or igniters that seek to help us just start on a new curve. To give you an example, at the enterprise level, uh, a number of us agencies have come together to create an alliance called the Scale Consortium. And in this alliance, we seek to level up uh, the perception of WordPress at the enterprise level. And even though we, Human Made, compete with other alliance agencies, sometimes on the same deal, trying to win one, um, we actually you know, always still come together as friends or colleagues uh, to really work on this for the benefit of the entire ecosystem. And I think this is the power of open source and WordPress. There we go. Uh, in closing, last year, we had our first WordCamp Asia in Bangkok. And it was such, oh, go back one, sorry. You guys killed my son, there we go. Um, was that always one off? Oh, interesting. There we go. Okay, no, we seem okay. Uh, so in closing, last year we had our first WordCamp Asia in Bangkok, and it was such a pleasure, really, genuinely, to see everyone again, um, because you know we've, we, we just had a couple years of COVID and had been apart from each other, uh, so it was just nice to spend time as humans. Um, but this year, this year is for building. We have to build the bridges that connect um, you know, our products to the market. 
uh, make it exciting, uh, make it useful, make it necessary, and make it so that people really want to use the software. So in these two days, talk to people, uh, reinvent the world, ideas don't cost anything, right? Uh, maybe if you're even inspired to take action, uh, you know, I, I think that would be absolutely great. Uh, but if you do, if you do take action, I promise you that many proprietary vendors ultimately will then become obsolete. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, Noel. Um, we have a gift for you thank as you. from the program team. So thank you. Please give another hand to Noel. Do we have a Q&A? Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, we have no time for questions for this session, but um, Noel, will I'll you be, be around? Please come and approach him, and we'll see you at the next sessions. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Thank you.